Have you ever felt stuck while building your data science project? There can be many reasons behind it, out of which the most common reason is not following the steps involved in the life cycle. Hello and welcome to all our viewers. I'm Dharna and I welcome all of you to an all new episode of Data Science Daily, where I'm going to talk about data science life cycle. Number one, problem identification. It's done clearly by identifying the root cause of a problem. You need to create a comprehensive problem statement that includes the problem's impact on the targeted client. Number two, data acquisition. It means determining whether there is adequate data to move ahead with the next modeling steps. This process is usually iterative. This is often achieved through an ETL pipeline. ETL stands for extract, transform and load. Number three, exploratory data analysis. The exploratory data analysis is the part where we comprehend everything about the data. That's done by adopting statistics and data visualization too. Here we analyze info such as how the various variables associated to one another and what their distributions look like. What is the correlation amongst the variables looking for proof of how well connected the data is to the targeted variable. Number four, data visualization. Data visualization generates noticeable insights in all terms. Just by plotting a basic pattern on a graph, this makes the patterns and the trends identification much simpler rather than just looking at a huge number of rows on a spreadsheet and just using statistics. Even if information is pulled from stats, insights from data with no visualizations are harder to communicate without proper visualization. Number five, feature engineering. Feature engineering is the process of using domain knowledge to extract features from raw data via data mining techniques. These features can be used to strengthen the performance of machine learning models. Feature engineering can be considered as applied machine learning itself. Number six, model training. Once the features are ready to be modeled, first we create a baseline model, then we do the model training. Then we keep increasing the complexity of the model and increasing testing with various algorithms to see how this particular data set responds to this algorithm, then you do hyperparameter tuning to set the right hyperparameter of the model, then we apply techniques to prevent overfitting such as cross-validation. Number seven, model deployment. Prior to deployment, we have to make sure that we test whether the model deployed matches the expectation of the original model. By using a test input set identified during the deployment stage, which produces validated results. Make sure the data is clean so that it can be processed by downstream machine learning components so that we can enforce expectations and transactions between the process, thanks to the consistency and quality of the data. Number eight, model monitoring. Here comes into the play two important components, data drift analysis, where we compare the incoming data distribution that is coming from the real world with the one that is scored. If we notice some difference between those, we need to select a threshold. Model drift analysis. We compare the difference between the score of the real world model distribution against the scored model distribution. So here, this is fed into a system which continuously reports and give outputs to the business user. So if you like this video, do hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. And also do not forget to connect with us on our social media handles until I meet you next time in yet another video.